Well, good evening, Margaret Ruth. Thank you so much for uh, accepting this interview. Thank you. It's fun to be here. I'm honored to be here. It, Thank it, you. Not, I've not done this before, so I hope you'll... Uh, give me hints if you see anything I can be doing better. So thank you. Uh, you no worries, no worries. So, um, well, you're you're an accomplished author. You're a metaphysic teacher and a yes. psychic. You do psychic reading. Yes. In Utah, you're based in Utah. I am. I am. Uh, although I have clients from around the world. And and today I'm particularly interested about. Uh, knowing a little bit more what is a psychic actually how do you guys do this and do we all have this ability how, how does this all work <laughs> oh all right uh, psychic uh, information one of my favorite topics thank you Lilu the uh, everybody is psychic you it's hard to be human it's it's hard to be physical if without having some uh, extra sense you some people call it extrasensory perception, some people call it sixth sense, you could call it the field. Uh, I always call it having antenna mm -hmm. and, and, and I feel like everybody develops their own antenna mm -hmm. for the kind of information they're interested in. In my case, I've always been interested in the future. I have a, a cool. I was, a, I started doing this as a business. I was getting my PhD in economics here at the University of Utah, mm -hmm. which is here in the USA. But you know that because you've lived here. <laughs> and, uh, and I wanted to raise some, I, I needed extra money like most PhD students. So I started doing my tarot cards professionally. And, and as I was doing my tarot cards for people, I started getting all kinds of other information, just uh, visual or verbal flashes or a knowing and I just have uh, developed this particular business doing psychic readings and teaching now so much that I'm not even uh, going to school anymore but that's how I started and my antenna was based on uh, doing so much work in economics and uh, I have a real interest in the future uh -huh. And that's where my antenna is. I, I love to talk about the future and people's future. That's mine. But I don't. If you read my article on intent.com about meta perception, which is one way you and I could talk about extrasensory perception, it's called meta perception. Okay. Uh, if you would like, or psychic information. It, I, I'll never forget this one man I met who was a car psychic. If he could look at a car and read whether it had been in an accident and if it had it had a dent or bumper work, he he could just read the car. And I thought, man, that's handy. And my 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 sense of that is he developed he developed an antenna for that. That that was just so interesting to him. He was able to start being able to read the car. Now I don't know about you, but I can't read cars. Mm -hmm. Can you? I. I no. I have I can't uh, I can't even fathom what that would be like, but it, it's my I, I'm almost, I, I'm certain that you and I and everyone else we we develop certain antennas uh, that align with our personal interests. So when you ask a question about psychic information, uh, I I think that you are referring to a, a vast body of information that's available. Uh, to, to your sixth sense, your extra senses, and, it, and not just your five senses. So anytime you're using those antennas, I would call it psychic information or metaphysical information, or we could call it meta-perception if you'd like. Mm -hmm. So you're actually uh, what, what tuning, in, yes. you're tuning in in this big cloud of information and consciousness. And yes, yes. You're like, when I have clients, what? You're, you're putting your antenna and, and, and receiving yes, that yeah, information yeah, exactly. directly. Yeah, like you're, yeah, and some people are a radar dish, and some people just have one little antenna, and then some people are completely closed down, you know. <laughs> but you don't have to be. You, you, uh, it, you've you heard some psychics or some uh, intuitives talk about being closed down or closed off or I'm completely open, and, and these, these words are are very valuable to use because they imply what you and I are doing uh, as far as, as, as our willingness to access a lot of extra information. Now, I have a lot of clients 
uh, who are too open, we could we could say that uh, they absorb everybody else's stuff. Negative, I call it positive. information. Yes. And you don't want to do that. And then, then we talk about the people who are completely closed down and they get nothing. And you don't want to do that either. So one of the things that you could do as you develop your own psychic information or your own antenna is, is, is discover what's optimal for you, uh, how open you want to be, when you want to be open, uh, what areas you want to be open to. For instance, I don't. I, I love the future. I'm I'm completely open to futures or reading people, but I don't do ghosts. I think ghosts are boring. I a ghost could be walking through your place right now, and I wouldn't notice it. I I, I it's it's an antenna of mine that I, it's just not active. So, but you need Does to have the person in front. You need to do cards, or you just could. I mean, right now, just speaking like this, you could read some things. I could, I could. If if if, if I put up an up antenna for somebody, uh, I could read them. Uh, if, if it's kind of like turning yourself on. How does it feel like? Uh, Can you tell me about the process? Uh, the process of tuning into a person. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's a very good question. Uh, my, I am clairsentient. Do you know what that means? No. Uh, in English, what what? Uh, Fran, it, it's it starts. It's a French. Prefix C L A R E. Clairvoyant, yeah. Yeah, like clairvoyant, uh, clairsentient means extra feeling. And so when I get information, I tend to get it in my center. So I'm feeling information. Mm -hmm. And I tend to say uh, things like, uh, I feel like you do this or I feel like you do that. So I'm clairsentient. Now, another person could be clairvoyant, 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 where you get the images mm -hmm. uh, you see. Mm -hmm. uh, then there's a uh, clairaudient, where you hear the information, and so on. Mm -hmm. So I'm clairsentient. So if I were tuning into Lilu, I would. Lilu? Uh, Lilu? I know, I thought, I thought, is that Lilu or Lilu? Okay, Lilu. <laughs> I would, uh, if I were turning into, tuning into Lilu, I would go to my center. I tend to close my eyes and then I, I feel the information. So it's a more energetic sense. So I would, so I would do things. Let's say I was reading you, Lilu. I would say, okay, what is your name? And I might ask your birthday. Uh, and, and I usually will have people ask a question. And that's another, that's a, the topic or the why I ask people to, to ask a question is, is basically it opens a door. It says Lilu wants to know something and she wants to know something in this area. So, uh, so that when we, I was talking about being very open or very closed, for me, there's an opening when you ask a question. Mm -hmm. So, if and I would that, ask, as, will, will I prof be a professional? Will I? Will I have a, a national, international television show? Sure. And then, so the minute you ask the question, that means you want to know. Mm -hmm. So that's my opening to look for an answer. I see. And it, it works really well that way because then I'm off. I'm off, I'm off, I'm off. Where are you and off? Then you tell, yes, I was off. And then now I'm on. Wow. I can answer. So I could answer that question. I, I could say, oh, all right, now we've got... Now I'll tune in, and now I can see what's going to go on with Lilu. But when you uh, you tune in, you tune in, so, so you get in your center, and then yes. do you connect. Do you feel this higher connection, or do you? Uh, I I kind of for me I say all right. I want to think about Lilu, and I want to think about her question. And my favorite way to find things out is to talk to your guides, or, or you could call them your guides or your angels or your committee, I call them, mm -hmm. and uh, your coaching staff. Mm -hmm. And I would ask them what they would tell you about that topic. And I like to talk to your guides because they, they have that, that uh, uh, I know you don't have this in France, but here in the United States we have football games. Have You've been to football games, and we have the... You've seen the stadium, and the coaches sit way up in the stadium, and 
they're watching the players on the on the field. So Lilu's guides, her angels, have that wonderful helicopter view of Lilu's future. And so they're up there. They're I, not down here. They're up there. Yeah, they're they got the, yeah they're like up here in a helicopter, going, oh Lilu, here's what you've got in front of you. Here are all your probable possible futures. And then uh, when when I'm looking at futures, it's like density. It's like weather forecasting. You, you take your inner radar and you you sense which which futures so so now I'm working more linear if that if this makes sense so we're looking at the Lilu's future and and my inner sense is probing uh, pushing against Lilu's probabilities and then I'm, I'm trying to find the most dense which would be the most compact the one that has the most energy around it so it's like weather forecasting I'm finding what's shaping up the most log or the most uh, not logical, but the most uh, uh, probable, probable uh, most most likely the one that's got the most energy around it. Now this is very helpful, by the way, because I've, I had a client just this week who her her guides, her angels, told her that. She, if she, she, they wanted her to make a few adjustments in the now because her probable future had some issues in it, and, and they didn't think that they were very positive. And it's kind of nice because if you can talk about your future now, let's say we want to talk about Lilu's international television career, and if your guides are looking at your future and we're looking at your probable future, it's always nice to know that there's something in your now that you can do and switch and alter and head perhaps in even a better future. It's a so vortex, that's how I would... It's a vortex of energies, or Abraham Hicks, Abraham and, and Jerry uh, Hicks, Hester Hicks are talking about a vortex. So things are always constantly changing and, and, and evolving. I like that, yeah. I, I really like Esther Hicks, the way that uh, Abraham describes energy. I really like that. Uh, one of my favorite things about Abraham is, is how uh, when Esther channels Abraham talking about by the by vibrational nature of things and events and I love it because it, it's it's the nicest simplest way to explain how we experience our reality and and so I think that's a good way to look at it is we if we use Lilu's future and we're looking at all the energy patterns the pro infinite probable futures uh, yes we're, we're when we're reading the density of the energies that are shaping up out there yes I, I would say that we're uh, uh, which one is Lilu most likely which path is she most likely to experience yes it, it, it has a lot to do with uh, your vibration right now and what you do today and what you do tomorrow and, and, the, and the day after and, and it's really interesting and I this is another way to say it when I do radio readings, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, my cheat, my fastest way to be accurate for a person is to uh, read them right now. Like, let's say if you are a caller on the radio station hello, and you want to, hello, yes, and I would say, I would, like I to would know read. If I would be an international television host. Yes, and then I would, if I, my cheat on radio is, all right, and then I would have my earphones on, and okay, all right, uh, Lilu. <laughs> Hi. Yeah, and I would say, I would read you right now, and if I read you right now, I'm going to be about 80% accurate on your future because, and the reason is, just like weather forecasting, people's futures tend to look uh, People's now tends to dictate where they're going to go in the future. So most people, if they don't change anything, everything keeps happening the way they've always been happening. So uh, if I read you right now, Lilu, I will, and and that's all I do. I just check in and I read Lilu today, right now. I will have a very good feeling for your current mix of beliefs and values and assumptions and insecurities and fears and when I read that when I read the symphony of Lilu I have a very good idea of what your future is and it's 
It's a cheat. It's the fastest way to be accurate about a person's future. The interesting thing about futures is you can never be perfectly accurate, thank goodness, because tomorrow Lilu could change everything. <laughs> And and therefore change a lot of her future, and that's um, that's the exciting, that's the interesting part. That's why it's hard to tell the future and be accurate all the time. But that there's is a one lot of, my of there's a lot of people that are making money that don't really have those skills, or that that are saying they do have, and then they do those readings and they rip off people. Is that possible too? I mean, there's, I guess, like I guess in any so. profession. Uh, yeah, I I I I. I I suppose I have a, a, I'm either going to be harder on those people or easier on them, I think. <laughs> One of the things is that, if, let's say you call me, you're my client, or you call me on the radio, <laughs> and I, you know, and I say, oh, okay, this is the future I see, and then uh, that future doesn't happen. What does that mean? Does that mean I'm an, a horrible psychic? Uh, does it mean I'm a great psychic but I had a bad day? Or maybe I'm a great psychic and I didn't read Lilu very well. Or I'm a great psychic, I read Lilu very well, I read her most probable future, but Lilu went and changed it. <laughs> hmm. Or, or, or uh, things like that. So, so that when you're telling somebody's future, I have always thought. Now, this is just me, and your other your other psychic uh, interviewees. I would be interested to hear what they say. But I figure that if I can be about 75, 80 percent on the future, I'm good. Mm. <laughs> I figure that's really good, and uh, and that's that's. I feel like that's the level that I need to keep for me to think that I'm I'm a, I'm a professional. Mm. So Does what do you? Sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what do you? Yeah. What do me, most people ask you? What kind of question are most people interested in in general? The number one question mm -hmm. is love ah. and relationships. Ah. Yes, number one. Most people feel very torn, very upset about what's happening in their relationships, and I feel like it's reasonable because. If you and I were doing a, a practical assignment, a business assignment, or a computer assignment, we we can follow the rules and the laws of the of of how to get that done. It's much it's different when you're doing relationships because you've got another person involved there, and you can't control the other person. You're not in charge of them. Mm -hmm. Very hard to have a relationship when you can when you only have. Um, responsibility and control for half of it. So most Americans, and I don't know about people in France, but I, most Americans were raised to think they were responsible for the other person's happiness. So I, I do a tremendous amount of business on people trying to have better relationships or recover and recover from a bad relationship or ask themselves, how can I fall in love one day? Or more, to be very honest, the number one question is, is will I ever find true love? That would be the number one question. Mm. The, uh, and then the answer to that can be very complicated. It's, you would think that a simple question like, will I ever find true love? <laughs> You'd think that you could have a simple, simple answer to that, but you can't. It's actually a very, very complex question. So and would you ask? Would you ask the the guide? Uh, um, yes. Uh, would you ask them actually for? Um, can, can they influence those decisions? I mean, can you get in contact and say, please help this person if that person wants yes. help? Yes. Yes. Now that's advanced. If you're if you're paying a lot of attention, let's say you're. I Leo. thought you were going to say a lot of money. Oh yeah, no, yeah. That's, if you pay a lot of money, yeah, yeah, nice. yeah, I can that, influence your guide. That would work. <laughs> Uh, but if if you're an advanced uh, person, my most advanced clients, when they come to get a reading, this is their question, and this has to do with what we talked about earlier. They want me to read them today because they know that how they are operating today, what their vibration is today, what their symphony is playing today, 
has an enormous amount to do with the future they're about to experience. So they are in, it, the advanced student wants to know what she what she's doing today. Is she okay? Has she got any blocks, fears, insecurities, issues that are keeping her from experiencing the future that she chooses? That's the most advanced way to get a reading. And that's my radio cheat, mm. is to read people today because it has so much to do with what they're going to experience in the near term. Mm. And so, uh, yes, so let's say Lilu says, Margaret Ruth, Margaret Ruth, I'm your client. And what I want is I want you to, to read me and talk to my guides and tell me what I need to do today so that I can have true love, great friends, time, energy, money, health, uh, a wonderful television program, everything in my dreams. What, what, read me today and tell me what keeps me from having that. And if you and I had that reading, it would be very effective because you would be able to look at the parts of Lilu who aren't cooperating, mm -hmm. who are blocking her. And once you've got a, if you're one, an advanced student, you can do something about that. You can do something about that today. It, you can start creating the exact future you want. And I like that because if you if you listen to Abraham and, and Esther Hicks mm -hmm. and other channelers like her and other and read books like Abraham books, you will know that you get to create the future that you experience. Yeah. And generations of people who are in their 30s mm -hmm. and their 20s, and this is where we're getting to some of your questions about the new mystic and the younger generation, but the you folks, you young, you, you young people, <laughs> you're great. You, you folks are fantastic. Your, your, your generations are so much more enlightened and so much more interested in having great outcomes for not only the planet, but for your communities, for yourselves. You, you, everybody, I'd say everybody who's under 40 right now is operating on a completely different wavelength than say my age group. And I know, you know my age group because I just announced I'm 52. So I'm a boomer. I'm in the boomer generation. So I have nothing but faith in you guys. It's hard for my sons to hear me say that, but it's just true. The the new the path that the planet is on right now is very positive. It doesn't mean that everything that's going on is positive, but it does mean that we have scientists who are in their 20s and their 30s who will be able to figure out some of these issues. And we have people in their 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s, and so on, who are more concerned about the planet. And so more is happening on more levels mm -hmm. than I've ever seen in my life right now. So I'm a little bit different than some people. I have nothing but positive uh attitude about it so tell me what is the what is the new uh, generation of psychic that you're seeing out there do you see new oh i love you uh, uh what i i'm this is just from my experience on a, a a rock radio station i was very fortunate for about eight years to be on a morning show for one of the united states best rock stations and what happened is I got to talk to thousands of young people, younger people in their 20s and their 30s. And I am so inspired by your generations. I feel like the younger generations of adults are operating on a different level than my generation, which is the boomer generation. And and when I think of the new generation mystic or the new mystic, I feel like people like me who want, and you, who want to talk about more, more soulful topics, more spiritual topics, more metaphysical topics. Um, when we go to talk to people in their 20s and 30s, it's, it's easier. They can, uh, people of the younger generations can, they understand better. They are more in tune with, alternative ways of knowing 
probably fast. Just less resistance. Less resistance. I like there. That's a beautiful way to put it. There you go. It's it's yes. Like if if you and I were trying to describe. Our, your first question to me today was about the nature of psychic information. If you and I were having a talk and we had a group of people in their teens, 20s, and 30s, that group would hear what we're talking about and follow with us. If we had the same talk with people in their 50s and their 60s, it would be a tougher talk. We'd can have we to really do worried more about time. others? I mean, can should we really worry about others, or should we just uh, yeah. really tune in, as you say, and, and express ourselves the way we are without really considering, okay, it's this audience or it's this and that? Should we more embrace oh, who yeah. we are? I mean, your information. Oh, well, is you mean if we were talking uh, yeah, to the different generations? Yeah. Well, I'm thinking, uh, no, I see what you're saying, and I, I'd like to get to, back to that point because it has to do with the younger folks. Uh, it's just that if you and I were talking to an older group about the topic, mm -hmm. the re yeah, it would be just a harder slog because there'd be more, mis they, they would be giving us the blank looks, uh, they would be arguing. <laughs> it, it, when you're like a, doing a teaching or a talk, you can kind of tell when your audience is in tune and paying attention and gets you and when they don't. Uh, but it's what you just said, though, is, is a really crucial aspect of the younger generations of adults. And I, I want to honor that. I want to go back to what you said. And that's the fact that nowadays the younger people are tend to at least a, a, more than when I was growing up. Uh, st have started to understand that the really important thing to do is to be yourself, to own your own energy, to be very interested in your own health and your own well-being, and, and, and to be invested in keeping yourself as healthy and happy as possible. This is novel. I mean, it's, it's, it's always been around for centuries. But when I was growing up, and probably when your parents were growing up, it was very different. We were taught to be much more concerned about what everybody else thought and how we should be – and this is kind of what your question is getting at, is, is, is when I was growing up, we were more concerned with how did we look and how did other people perceive us and – and I don't know about you, but when I was growing up, it was like, you know, I want the boys to fall in love with me, so I have to be really pretty or I have to be really athletic. And, and, and well, that was here in America. As you, as you remember, these are very important things here in the U.S. And, and so we've got generations of people who are more concerned about what others think about them than what they think about themselves. And the younger a person is, the more in tune they are with the message that you just presented. And the message is, is it's more important to be myself and like myself than worrying about whether other people like me. Yeah. That's a younger, that's, it, you'll find it in all generations, but more people of your generation and younger know that. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so you put your finger right on it, right there. How old are you? 32. Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. But at the same time, I think we feel this way once we start to trust ourselves, open our hearts. It's hard to feel that and be that when we're in fear. And it's only when we start to want more. And I think in the 30s, that's something that a lot more of us experience as we become adults. And in the 40s and then 50s, we start to detach, don't we, from... From, from all those uh, stereotypes or how we think people judge us. And at some point in life, we just say, who cares? Yes, but I would have you, I wish Maybe I would, we get I would it younger you, these days. Maybe yeah, I, would, I want you to do that at 14. <laughs> no. And, and, yeah, I want the 14-year-olds to be more interested in their own self-expression than whether the boys like them. Oh. Which is I know it. If that's a little hard to do, but uh, but the the more we raise our children to be interested in their own perf their own personal perfection and their own self self affirming authenticity, the better our planet's going to be. People get some people, some critics, and they're usually my age, say that that sounds very selfish, and yet it, it's not selfish at all. It's actually it would be so positive. 
I think I would go out of business if we had all these self-affirming, <laughs> secure and self-loving people run around. But so I would well, just, it would be, it would be a big deal. That's a good thing, though, because I think I think yes. that we are becoming a psychic ourselves. Though we are developing yeah. that sixth sense, we are becoming more in tune. We're we're more intuitive, and I think this is really the personally. That's my thought: is that the new generation is 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 be becoming that. So it's something oh, that I, probably we're going to be equipped with, and that's the real human revolution, perhaps. I think so, and I I, I that's I think that's why I have such confidence in the in the younger generations and I love the way that you're span you're, you're straddling that those 20s and those 30s so you're sitting right in the right place Lilu uh, of spotting these developments and I personally as a psychic and a person and a citizen have nothing but great trust and admiration and excitement about your generations I, I, I think they're gonna make a huge difference and I feel excited about the world. The, what's going to happen in the world is you guys come into your own. And I hope that if I could talk to all of you, if I could get all the 20-year-old and the 30-year-olds that are paying attention to say, what I need you guys to do is to not be concerned about what other people think about you. Be concerned about what you think about you and live an authentic life be secure don't be afraid and if you are afraid let's take care of it let's talk about it now because if you're fearful now remember what we're talking about the future it all ties in is if you're afraid now if you're insecure now if you don't like yourself now I can assure you you're not going to like your future mm. much so uh, that that's uh, why I feel excited about your generations as far as the, the future of the planet. Thank you very much. That was uh, very, well. very great message. It was definitely heard. Thank you. Oh, good. Thank you, Margaret, good. For, for taking the time very to well. do this interview and answering those questions and opening our minds to the psychic word. And, and uh, it's very interesting. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.